G'day everyone. So for today's activity, we're going to need one of our Papercraft CubeSats. If you don't have one yet, you can find instructions to make one and the uh, template you need to download on our website. So what we're going to do today is we're going to make our little Papercraft CubeSat here, not just look like bin R2, bin R3 and bin R4, but actually be able to work a little bit like bin R2, bin R3 and bin R4 as well. To do that, we're going to do a little bit of electronics, but the first thing we've got to do is pull our CubeSat to bits. So if you did make one and you glued it together, I'm very sorry, you might have to start from scratch. If you did just use our little paper tabs, uh, we have a CubeSat that we can take to bits again. So I'm gonna start by just popping the top off there, pop those little tabs out of the sides. We're gonna lay our CubeSat bus, and that's what we call the part of the CubeSat that holds all the other bits. We're gonna lay our CubeSat bus out flat like that. Uh, and it should pop straight back together again when we're ready. So we're going to use our papercraft spacecraft here as the basis for a little electronics project. Uh, and the thing we are going to use to do that is an electronics prototyping tool called a breadboard. Now, if you have one of our uh, bin our introduction to electronics kits or payload building kits, uh, you'll find this exact breadboard in your box. If not, they're super easy to find. They're about five bucks from Ultronics or uh, any other sort of electronics type store. So the way a breadboard works is we use it to put a circuit together quickly and make sure it works. In our CubeSat, it's gonna be where we build our little sensor projects and it's gonna let us reuse the same uh, CubeSat bus over and over again because when we stick things to a breadboard, we're not soldering them. They're actually called solderless breadboards for that exact reason. So the way a breadboard works is that everything we put in the same row is gonna be connected to everything else in that row, uh, but each row is separate. And we'll talk a little bit more about how that works in a sec. Uh, but basically we're gonna be sticking our components into this grid. But the first thing we're gonna do is actually stick it to our CubeSat. So these particular breadboards have a little uh, self-adhesive sticky patch on the back. Um, if you've used yours before and it's peeled off and gotten all gross, that's okay. You can just glue it back on with regular glue stick. Uh, but this one happens to be nice and fresh. So we're gonna peel this bad boy off. Got a little bit of ASMR action going, hold on. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. We are gonna stick this breadboard very carefully right underneath our antenna, just like that. Got a little push down and it should be stuck on there real good. This is where we're gonna build our next couple of sensor projects. And this actually kind of works the same way as our Binar payload bay. So on the real Binar spacecraft, we have a payload bay. It's about five and a half centimeters long uh, and just a little bit less uh, wide and deep than our CubeSat. So just a little bit less than 10 centimeters wide and 10 centimeters deep. So it actually fits inside our CubeSat bus, um, which means the space you've got inside the payload bay isn't actually that much bigger than the space you've got inside one of these CubeSats. So if you are going to try and build a payload of your own, this is good practice for working with very, very small projects. But our payload bay doesn't just give us somewhere to put our payload, it also gives us electrical power. So we don't always know exactly how much power we're going to be getting from our batteries because when we pass behind the Earth in our orbit, uh, we're in complete darkness and our batteries start to go down. And when we are in front of the sun, our batteries are charging up and so our battery voltage goes back up again. So we're not exactly sure how much we're going to get. So the first thing we've got to do is make sure our power supply is stable. Make sure we're getting a consistent number of volts coming into our circuit. So a lot of the sensors that we're using not only need a particular voltage to work, but we also need to know exactly what that voltage is. We need it to be nice and consistent uh, because a lot of the time the data that we're getting back is as a percentage of that overall voltage. So if our sensor is at say 50%, we might get two and a half volts back if we're giving it five volts. But to know what percentage it is, we need to know how much we're giving that sensor. So the first thing we're going to build is a little power regulation circuit. I'm going to pop over to the lab and get our electronics expert, Jacob, to help me out with that one. This power regulation block is going to be used for every single right. further So we can't, section we're we can't do any of our, the rest of our project without power. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Everything needs power to run. That checks um, out. First thing we need to do is we need to look at the data sheet for the voltage regulator. So this is the first page of the voltage regulator's data sheet. And this little guy is the chip that we're looking at. That is our LDO. The first thing we want to look at is the output voltage 
which is stated just here. And in particular, this states that we can do an output voltage of 5 volts. The reason why we've picked 5 volts is because the microcontroller we've selected, the temperature sensor, all require 5 volts. Mm -hmm. So when 5 volts is what we call our system voltage. So the package that we've got here is like a, like a little D shape. And that is a TO92 package, is the technical term, which is this one. And now if we look at the actual shape of the package, we can see one side is curved and one side is flat. And then if we hold the flat side up so that it lines up here, you can see the pins line up. So the three pins we've got are the output, ground in the middle, and then the input on the right. So the next thing we want to look at is the next page of the data sheet. And this is what states some of our electrical characteristics of the chip. The absolute maximum input voltage that we've got for this chip is 35 volts. That means that if we put higher than 35 volts into this chip, it's probably going to blow up. <laughs> but in this case, we're not going to be using 35 volts. We're going to be using our 9 volt battery. So in this case, the dropout voltage here is this value here, V in min. And it says next to it, minimum value of input voltage required to maintain regulation. And that value is shown in the typical column to be 6.7 volts. And obviously our 9 volt battery is a lot higher than 6.7 and at the point where it hits 6.7 volts the LDA will stop working and then the rest of the circuit will stop as well. So this big circuit is actually what is inside this little chip. That's how it functions. But what we care about is the typical application circuit indicated at the bottom. So we can see it's got input, which will be the input from our 9 volt battery. And we've got our output, which is our output to the rest of our circuit. It's got the middle lead, which connects to the ground. And then in addition to that, it has two capacitors. So it's got C1, which says 0.33 microfarad. And it's got C2, which says 0.01 microfarad. One with the slightly shorter legs here says 334, which means that's our 0 0.33. The way you work it out is it's a 3, 3, and then the 4 is how many zeros are on it. So it's a 0 0.33. And then we've got a 104, which is again a 1, 0, and then 4. So that's a 0 0.01. So these three parts will go together somewhat like this. And then battery will go on the input. And then we can place the LDO into the breadboard in any three rows. So the reason why we placed it across again is so that the legs aren't connected together. If we were to take it off and place it like this, horizontally, all of those three legs are in the same five holes, which means they're all connected together. And that means they're shorted out. And if you power that, it'll probably blow up. So we put it across ways. And in this case, I've got the flat side facing towards me. So we can line our data sheet up, let's say, with how it looks on our breadboard, basically from underneath the part towards the bottom and the legs would be coming out of the page here like we had before. So when we line up this leg with this part of the breadboard and then we flip it over, it's reversed. Okay, so now that we've put our LDO into the breadboard, the next stage will be to put our capacitors in. So we've got our typical application circuit here, which indicates that our C1, our input capacitor, connects between the input pin and ground. So we take our capacitor here and we can work this one out by it says 334, which indicates our 0 0.33 microfarad. Now this capacitor will connect between the input pin and the center pin. The center pin is the ground. So we can connect it between the two rows that are there. That will go nice and close between the two rows. The second part we need to connect is our output capacitor, which is indicated by C2. This is 0 0.01 microfarad. In that case, we've got a 104, which corresponds to 0 0.01 microfarad. Now this capacitor, much like the first one, goes between the ground pin and the output pin. So that we can connect between those two terminals on the breadboard. And we'll just make sure they're all standing up nice and straight and they're not touching each other to make sure there's no shorts. The ground pin, I'm going to use this black wire. Black is usually the standard color for ground. And that goes and connects to where all the other ground pins are, which is in the middle of the LDO. And for that, we're going to connect just further across the board, just like that. The second pin we're going to connect is the input from the 9 volt battery. And that I'm going to use this white lead for. So the input pin 
connects, as we can see in the diagram here where it says input, that connects to both the capacitor and the input of the LDO. So we can connect that to the same row that all the others are on, and then that can go down to a separate row further down the board. So now we know that this pin is the positive voltage from the 9 volt battery, and this pin is the negative voltage from the 9 volt battery. So the final wire we use is the brown wire here, and this is going to represent our output voltage. So for this wire, we're going to connect to the output pin of the LDO. So we'll connect that to there, and then this we can connect elsewhere on the board. So now we've got our whole circuit set up. This is all we need to convert our voltage. So we've got our 9 volt battery, and we've got our battery connector clip here, and this goes on the top of the 9 volt battery. And now the red wire from this battery snap is a positive, so that connects into the same row of five as the white wire that goes into the positive input for our LDO. Just like that. And then the black wire from the battery is the negative from the battery itself, so that connects up to the negative port on the output of the LDO. And the last thing we can do is we can turn our power on. So now our LDO will be outputting voltage, will be regulating our voltage, sorry, down to 5 volts. So the last thing we want to do is we want to get our multimeter just here. We'll line that up somewhat like that. And we want to turn our multimeter from off to one that says, it says the V, and then it's got a line and some dashes. That indicates the flat line, indicates that it's DC voltage. If we use the V with a wavy line, it's measuring AC voltage. So we can measure the output from our LDO. We can connect one, one of the, the black lead here, which is our negative for our multimeter. That will go to the center pin of our LDO. And then the positive is our output, and that will go to the output from our measuring. And we can see here it outputs exactly 5.00 oh, volts. <laughs> that is very satisfying. So we've managed to turn our 9-volt battery into a 5-volt battery. Awesome. All right, so I hope you got all of that. We are going to put that exact same circuit on our little breadboard inside our CubeSat here. We've got the same components. We've got our little voltage regulator here. We've got our, I just call them the big capacitor and the small capacitor here. And we are going to whack those into our breadboard. And this is going to basically be the same for every circuit. So once you put this in, uh, you're going to use this exact same little power regulation system for all of the projects we're going to do. So starting with the uh, flat side out like that, and we're going to pop that into the top three holes of our breadboard like that. Now we don't have a lot of space to work with. Huh, pun absolutely not intended. So I'm actually going to trim these legs down a little bit. Uh, you don't have to do this, but you're welcome to if you want to uh, stop things sticking out quite so much. I'm gonna trim that leg off to about there. Don't trim them too short, otherwise you'll uh, struggle to get them in. And we're gonna pop our big capacitor just across those first two holes there and pop it down in. And we're gonna take our little capacitor, trim that one down a little bit too, and whack that one so it connects the other two. So our regulator is going to take power in from our battery from the top there and we're going to connect our middle line there to our ground. So our circuit so far is looking like this with our, our battery connector just here. So that little regulator is going to make sure that the voltage we're getting in this row here is exactly dead on 5 volts. And those little capacitors are going to make sure that it doesn't fluctuate too much, that any lumps, if you like, in our voltage get smoothed out. All right, so we are just about ready to give our CubeSat a little brain. But before we do that, we should really test that we've got this first little uh, power system working. So I'm going to whack our 9 volt battery on here. And I'm going to grab our multimeter and stick it onto DC volts. And we're going to stick... Whew, okay, here we go, moment of truth. We're gonna pop one of those in there into our ground. We're gonna pop the other one into the next row down. And we have exactly, well, almost exactly five volts. If I pop that back onto the top, where our nine volts are coming in, we can see we've got uh, 
that's pretty close to the battery voltages we get on the actual spacecraft. So if you wanted to, if you were building a payload of your own, you could actually use this exact uh, chip, this exact little piece of your circuit or one pretty similar to it to power your actual payload. All right, so we've got our chassis in place. We have our little payload bay, our uh, breadboard where we can put our electronics and have them work. We've got our power supply, our, our electrical power system is in place and tested and working. Next step, we're gonna give our CubeSat a mission.